Yeah. This meeting is being recorded. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Okay. Welcome to the class. Mal Hashem. Okay. So here we go. How do you sleep at night, Rabbi? Uh, with, with lots of guilt. Guilt? Yeah, I know. They say mm. you know, when you feel guilty, you can't sleep. <clears throat> I was eavesdropping on a girl's conversation about sleep. That's why oh. I'm asking. Okay. Well, we said, Kabbal Harab, that we end up so wired after the shira that then we have a hard time winding ourselves down to sleep. So that's a good sign, oh, well, I assume. Well, I guess that's not with everybody. Maybe you're like that, but uh, most people, oh. are, they're, they're, they're falling asleep in the class sometimes. Ah, well. <laughs> Okay. Well, it depends on the topic, I guess, you know. Yeah, it depends but, on the topic. depends on the size of your soul, the, the energy of your soul. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we're starting with Gimel in the same parak, uh, we're talking about Rabbeinu Tam again. Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam. So it says over here, Matzati uh, Bachubash Kenazit. Before I should, I should start the Facebook. Give me one second. The Facebook. Forgot about that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, very good. Okay, so I hope you see the screen, right? You see it? Okay, so it says, Matsati but Chubash Kenazit. It says, We found a Chubash Kenazit. Uh, who is this Maharil? It sounds like this. She doesn't get feeling. So it says, Two pairs of feeling. So look what it says, right? We don't find the elder rabbis, the Abde Hachi, right? The two, they put down two feeling. As we said, right, with the Ashkenazim, it wasn't so uh, far, it wasn't so spread, widespread, this thing, you know, to put two in, especially the Lithuanian uh, crowd. So at that time, by the way, at the time of the Maharil, there was no Hasidim yet, you know, the Hasidim came later. So it was uh, something new, you know. So the Maharil never saw any Hasidim. All he saw was regular Ashkenazim. And they don't put Tfilin in the Rabbinu town. They don't put Tfilin. They have the Achi, the Gufa Azir Batar Resha. So it says that, um, it goes after the beginning with Samhinan Alma Shkatava Samag. So it says, um, we rely, why don't we put Tutfilin? He's trying to explain what the reason is. We rely, it says, on what it says in the Samag, that it says right regarding they found a certain Tutfilin at the grave site of Yechezkel, the prophet. <clears throat> so he says also another thing. So in other words, they found that it was like Rashi, right, that Tutfilin. That's one thing. And also, he said, Rabbi Tam, <clears throat> he, he made a, he asked in a dream, you know, uh, to get an answer. So it says, it seems to me that since it's not customary, it, it seems like it's, you're being arrogant a little bit. What does that mean? You're putting two tefillin, everybody else is putting one, you know, so you look like you're arrogant. That's also another issue, right, that we have to deal with regarding this issue. Then he told et Hashem elam mishem muchzak v'posam b'chasidut. So he says the truth is, you know, that only a person who's really like, you know, known to be a Hasid, right? 
somebody is known to be very pious, should put should put two tefillin, right? So if he's just a regular guy, why should he do that? But it doesn't look right, like he's doing more than everybody else. It looks like he's arrogant. It looks like he's conceited. Mashallah, you can call otam shereitim gnoagin can. It's not so the ones that uh, I saw, they were accustomed to do so. Um, goes on to say, yeah. So he says we should put them all together. So what he means to say is that you should put both them at the same time. Rashi and Rabbi Nathan at the same time. And if he's not able to do so, you can't put both both them at the same time. So what should you should do is put Rashi first and then bless on that. Because that's a custom. So Rabbi Tam is coming to fulfill right the other side. In other words, since we're not sure, which is the Pesach. So he says the same thing also we do on the night of Pesach, right? Which is coming up in a, a little bit more than a month, right? So it's just around the corner, Pesach. So there's something similar that we do on Pesach as well. You, 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 anybody know what it is? Oh, if you can guess that, you're a good one. You're, you're, you're on the, really on the ball. Okay, so, could, you repeat that? could you repeat that again, please? <clears throat> He's saying like this, right? That just like with Rabbeinu Tam, what we do is like we, we put Rashi and then we put Rabbeinu Tam just to make sure we're doing the right thing, you know? Because we're not sure which one is the right one. Same thing also that we do on Pesach, he says. Mm -hmm. Where do we do on Pesach something which is extra uh, to, to, to fulfill the obligation from all sides, from all opinions? Do you remember what, what that is? It's in Agada. We, uh, we have Seder twice. Oh, no, that's because of the Yom Tov Sheni. That's a different oh. story. But I'm talking about this, right? That Because um, we're outside of Israel. But I'm talking about something else. He's, you know what he's talking about here? Uh, he says like this, right? That um, the, the Mevachina em Amatsa'a al-Lechud kerabanan dehadar abdin an kericha belo bracha keilev. So what we do is when we eat the Matzah that night, right? On the night of the Seder, we bless on the matzah, right? What's the blessing we make, by the way? We say, Allah hilat matzah, right? Allah hilat matzah. That's a blessing on the matzah. First, we make hamotzi, and then Allah hilat matzah, and then we eat the matzah, one kazait. But then, right, we have that kricha. You know what the kricha is? The sandwich, right? We put mm. uh, two pieces of matzah and put inside there some uh, some haroset, I'm saying, not haroset, the maror and the romaine, right? The romaine lettuce. And mm. we, we dip it in haros a little bit, right? We dip it in, and uh, so that's what we're talking about here. Uh, so why do we eat that sandwich? What's the reason why? Because we want to fulfill the obligation according to Hillel. Because Hillel says that's the way it's got to be done. To eat the matzah. So what, what, happened, what does that mean? According to him, just like it says in the pasuk, in the verse, it says, you have to eat it together with the maror, right? Uh, together with the bitter herbs. Uh, so therefore, <clears throat> He says you should eat them together. Like a sandwich, make a sandwich out of it. Okay. Also, when you read the Megillah on the 14th of Adar, it's coming up very soon, Purim, right? Next week. Right? Uh, with Tetvav, and also the 15th of Adar. So some people, you know, they read twice the Megillah. You know, what, you know why that is? Because they live in a place where they're not sure what the rule is in that place, to read it on 14 or 15. So what they do is sometimes they read it twice. By the way, this is the way I saw when I was in Israel uh, a couple of years ago. I saw that's what they do in uh, the city of Lod. Right? Lod, which is uh, uh, not far from Tel Aviv. But um, what they do over there is that they read, it, they read the Megillah two nights. The 14th and the 15th. Why they do it this way? The reason is because they're not sure if that city was a walled city at the time of Yeshua bin Nun. So therefore, they're just to make sure they read it twice. <clears throat> Some places that they have a custom to do like that. So he says that um, um, the So, but which one do you bless on? Right, you bless on the first reading or the second? So you have to bless on the first one. Why? Because most people read on the fourteenth. So therefore, you should bless on the fourteenth. And then the fifteenth, you read it without a blessing. That's what he means to say. So same thing, you know. Again, right? Same idea. Um, so 
So he says the proper thing is like this. You put Rashi when you're doing Kiyat Shema and Tefillah, your prayers, Kivan de Nahug Alma Kirashi, because people are it's custom to, to wear Rashi. Uh, so you shouldn't uh, do like different from all the community. To make like different factions in the community, you know, one faction, the other faction, you know, the Democrats, the Republicans, right, the right, the left deal, right? Well, you know, don't don't become like that. Uh, so it says right that. Um, So then once you finish the prayers, put Rabbi Nutam. So it says, if you're afraid that you shouldn't be reading Kiyat Shema without Tfilin, that's more, you should read with Rabbi Nutam also Shema again. Right? And all these, these two uh, Prakim. Okay, so that's basically the idea, right? That's what it says in Bet Yosef. Uh, <clears throat> that's the way we do it. So, right, again, the bottom line is like this. The custom is, according to what we said, that we put both of them, uh, right? Uh, if you're a pious person, a little bit, you know, God-fearing, right? So even if you're not so pious, by the way. A lot of people who are not so pious, they already put Rabbeinu Tam. Because now it became a custom in many places. Uh, so, uh, therefore, right, what you do is, you put Rashi first, you bless on that one, and then you put Rabbeinu Tam without a blessing. That's the way it works. Right, so this way, the blessing kind of like goes on that one too, because you're doing it afterwards. Something like that. Okay, good. So that's the story. So let's go to Shulchan Aruch and see right, the, the, the bottom line. Let's go to Shulchan Aruch. Okay. So what does he say over here? That a person shouldn't put Rabbeinu Tam unless he's known to be, you know, a very pious person. Right? So then, right, the question comes up, which is asked by the Achronim, the Chida, Baran Ravadia, my rabbi, he also asks this question, right, then how do we do it today? We're, what, we're all pious, uh, these people? Not exactly all pious, these people. So then how do they do it? So the answer is that since the custom is to do so in that community, you're allowed to do it. That's what that's what it says in Echida. You know, the writes Echida when he went to Eretz Israel to visit there, right? Uh, eventually, he moved there uh, as well. You know, uh, but when he went to visit there, um, he he was Moroccan. You know, he lived in, he was born in Morocco. So when he went there, he saw that people were putting the uh, Ben Tam, even regular people. So he was you know he was astonished by that. He was like, oh wow. Over here, you know, they put Rabbi Tam, even the regular guys. So therefore, he wrote in his book that nowadays, you know, if the custom is like that, even a regular guy can do it. Somebody was saying something? Okay, so that's the idea, you know, so that's what the Chida says. And that's the custom today, by the way. Wherever it is the custom to put Rabbi Tam, uh, definitely you can put it there. There's no uh, issue there, right, about being conceited. Because everybody does it, or most people do it. But uh, that's good enough. That's fine. But says the Mishnah Brua, if other people don't do it, you know, and you're like you're like the only one, or like there's only a few people, you know, putting it there, and the rest of the people don't put it. So he says it's not allowed to put it there. Why? Because you look like you're being conceited. <clears throat> so therefore, he says, what should you do? <clears throat> there's, you know, put it at home. Uh, go home and put it when you go home. <laughs> that's one option, right? Very simple. But there's also other options, you know. He writes in his books like this, you know. He says that if you want to do this trick, you can do it like this, okay? Like take off your tefillin Rashi and pretend like you're going out, you know, you know, something to do something outside. Go out, you know, leave leave the shul for a second, and then come back in and then put Rabbi Nutan. So this way they won't notice that you that you're putting a different tefillin because they're gonna just think you went out, so you have to put put it back again. In a sense, this way it won't cause any ruckus or some kind of, you know, unpleasant upheaval in the shul, right? This way it'll be fine. So this is the way you can do it if you want. Right? That's the way I do it, by the way. That's the way I do. You know, I, I, I learned all these tricks. So <laughs> what I do is, 
I uh, I take off my Rashi, I go outside for a second, come back in, and then put my Rabbi Tam. This way, nobody really notices it. You know, uh, so it's fine, you know. In fact, one you know, one person came to me in, in the Minyan, and he told me, he says, I never saw you put Rabbi Tam. Uh, so I, I said, very good. If you didn't see me, that's good. That means I hide it good. I'm hiding it well. That's, that's the whole point, right? <laughs> so I told him, I said, I do put it, but I know how to hide it in a way that people don't notice. So this is the rule, you know, if you're doing something that the median is not doing, you, you look conceited, you know? So don't do it in front of them. It's not a, not a good idea. It's forbidden. I mean, you know, not only is it not a good idea, it's forbidden. There's there's also brought down, you know, in the Ben Ishchai, Rabbi Yosef Chaim, he writes in his books, in one of his books, that uh, I think it's Odo Od Yosef Chai. He writes over there, that, uh, you know, as, as we said, right, there's also a third feeling that is customary to put, which is Shimu Sharaba, according to the Midrash, Shimu Sharaba. That feeling is a little bit different than the one that we put. <clears throat> so the, the Kabbalists, you know, the Mekubalim, what they do is that they put that feeling uh, during Mincha time. Uh, so that's what the Benish used to do, also with his Rebbe, Rabbi Vadiya Somech, the, the, him and his Rebbe, they used to put Shimu Sharaba, and the rest of the community was not putting. But not, every, not everybody's a Kabbalist, you know? Even in Iraq, right? Uh, in the land of uh, mysticism, right? Not everybody's a Kabbalist over there. So uh, they, they were the only ones who were doing it. So they didn't want to look like they're conceited. So you know what they did? It says there in the book that they used to go up to the Ezzat Nashim, to the women's section, and they would lock the door and put it over there, you know? This way nobody would see them. That's what they did. So this way, right, uh, they didn't cause also a ruckus. And by the way, According to halakha, they were allowed to do it, even if they wanted, even in front of everybody. Why is that? Because since they're the Gedolei Ador, they're the big rabbis of the generation, they're not, you know, we're not, they shouldn't be concerned about being conceited because they're the leaders of the, of, of the community. So there's nothing to be conceited about there. Nevertheless, right, uh, they, he didn't, they didn't put it because they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to be hot shots. They wanted to be like everybody else, regular guy, you know, one of the, one of the bunch, you know, so they, they didn't uh, they only put it upstairs when they lock the door. So you learn from there, right? Good lesson about these things. Don't be a hot shot. Don't be conceited. Do like everybody else. And uh, if you want to do extra stuff, do it on your own privacy. It's the general rule. Okay, very good. So now we'll go to Dalit, right? There's one more Shukhanu here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so he says um, like this in Shulchan Uqdalet, Lo yaniach bet zugot bekis echad. He says, don't put both uh, pairs of tefillin in one bag. We already mentioned this yesterday. But you shouldn't put them in one bag. What's the reason why? Shayachad mehem hu chol. Because according to the simple meaning, one of them is not the real tefillin, right? It's a machloket. So we're not really sure which one is kosher. So according to the simple meaning, the pshat, one of those tefillin is just a box, you know, with straps. It's not, it's not, it's not holy. It doesn't have the holiness of tefillin. It's not, it's not kosher tefillin. So therefore, uh, the rule is right. You shouldn't put them together. Why? Because you can't put something which is not holy on top of something which is holy. This is a general rule, right? In, uh, in, in halakha, something which has holiness, you can't put something which is not holy on top of it. Uh, so therefore, right? That's why you can't put something on a separate Torah, right? What are you gonna do? Place place your uh, cell phone on top of the Sefer Torah? That's not exactly a good idea, right? To do something like that, you wouldn't want to do that. So, uh, therefore, he's telling you don't put them in one bag because you're gonna come come to transgress this prohibition. Uh, so the problem is like this, right? That since one of them is mundane, it's not holy. You're not allowed to put it in that bag because that bag is only for tefillin. That's also another thing. Right, um, so what should a pro proper proper person do? Give you should have two bags, right? One twin, one Rashi, one Rabbi Tam, and each one should be marked, right? So you know which one is which. You shouldn't confuse them. So you have some kind of a marking there that tells you which one is which. This way you don't because people, you know, especially in the morning, you know, just woke up like you're a little bit dizzy. You could put the wrong one by mistake. You know what I mean? You wanted to put Rashi, and you put Rabbeinu Tam instead. 
It happens, but it happened, it happened to me a couple of times. You know, I put the wrong one. Uh, and I said, oh, gee, wow, this feels a little strange. This is not my Rashi. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is my Rebbe Tom. So you know, you know what I did, right? I did that by mistake. So what did I do? First, I finished the prayer, you know, the Amida. You know, I finished. And then when I finished, I put the Rashi afterwards. Because, uh, you know, I, I, did the, I did it in the wrong order. But uh, what can you do, right? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't on purpose, but my mistake. It happens. Okay, so that's the story, right? Um, so therefore, you shouldn't put them into one bag. Maybe each one should have its own bag. Also, according to Kabbalah, right, there's also other reasons for that. As we said, that the uh, according to Kabbalah, the Trinity of Rabbeinu Tam is more holy than Rashi. Right? In other words, according to Kabbalah, they're both holy. It's not like one of them is mundane, like, like, like we're talking about here. According to Kabbalah, they're both holy. They're both kosher. And then you need both of them to get the proper bechina, right? The proper uh, orientation from both of them. You do need both, according to Kabbalah. So, but Rabbi Tam is a higher level. So therefore, uh, you should never put the Rashi on top of the Rabbi Tam, according to the Kabbalah. So that's another thing, that's another reason why you shouldn't put them together. Right? You don't want to have that issue going on. Right? One is more holy than the other, this one, this thing, whatever, all kinds of stuff. So therefore, right, that's the way to do it. Okay, Baruch Hashem. I think we're done with this chapter. Yeah, we're done. So we're going to now Lamed Hey. Next chapter. <clears throat> okay, let's get started with that. This is also a small one. Only one halakha here. Okay. Are we done with the tefillins, uh, Rabbi? Or? No, we're just doing the different aspects of the tefillin, you know, but this is much easier stuff. You see, it's not like the technical stuff we were doing before, which was really, you know, involved. This is more like, you know, like you can you know, sit on your couch, you know, your lazy chair, you know, sit back, relax, you know, and enjoy yourself. Mm. Mm. I'm joking, really, you shouldn't be learning like that. You shouldn't, when a person is learning Torah, you shouldn't be sitting back on his lazy chair. But uh, <laughs> you should be sitting upright. <clears throat> well, I've been standing for nine hours, so I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, oh, I, am wow. sitting, <laughs> I am sitting back on my lazy chair, but I'm I'm paying attention. Just, okay, uh, question is, do you have a lazy chair, David? It's a couch. It's a you couch. Know? Got it, okay. And I have my feet up on the. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those single ones. You know, the ones that are like you know they recline the recliner. Oh no! I and I regret not getting one. Ah, <laughs> maybe you should get one now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's never too late. No, no. You don't need it. It's okay. You don't need it. Uh, I'm joking. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Uh, so it says the two over here. Nahagu b'minyan ashitin al pi akabala mishto b'shel yad sheva shitin. Look what it says. Interesting, right? But according to Kabbalah, it says custom is to do in the arm filling. We do the filling seven lines from top to bottom, right? Seven lines. So the way it's written, it's like it's wide and and short, right? Like this, it gets spread out. It's like a rectangular shape. So it's only seven lines going to this. Every parsha has seven lines. Bashel Rosh. In the head, dalat uh, it's four lines. Then shina lo But if you change that that number, it doesn't puzzle it, right? It doesn't make it invalid. So it says these are the um, tops of the lines. The yad, right? When it comes to the arm, by daber by daber, that's the beginning of the line. You start with that word, right? Et hayom yotzim latet. So these are, these are all the words that start with the lines. You understand? The, the, start the lines. The first line is by the bear. Second one, et. Third line, hayom. Third, fourth line, yotzim. Fifth line, latet. 
six line like the Chag Haru Torah, very good. Like something like that. So that's the that's the way it works. Kavod Harav, I'm sorry. Can you repeat five and six, the five, six, and seven, please? Yeah, it's, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it goes like this, right? It says, um, Vaida Bear is number one, right? And then mm -hmm. Et, mm -hmm. right? Hayom, uh -huh. right? Um, so what do we have here? We got three, right? Yeah, Yotze, the next one, yeah. Yotzeim, right? Going out, yes. going out, number four, right? Mm -hmm. Five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight words. So one of them must be like a double, double thing, you know, like a two words. You understand? Okay. So that's the way it is, you know. I'm not really sure how it goes, but uh, that's the way it works. So, so it's like one of them is like a two-word thing, expression. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, if you look on the parchment, you'll see right uh, your local parchment. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of those. And... Uh, well, that matters. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's the way it works. I'm okay. sure you can find you can find it on Google. You know, like I, I'm... the way okay. it looks at Tefillin. Yeah, you'll find it. No, thank no, you. Like, <laughs> right uh, so seven lines, like Bishnia. So what about the that's the first parsha? Second one goes like this: Vayaya, Rachem, Bese, Demor, Ki, Hiksha, Behema, Leot. Right? These are the first words of the line. Each one. Then the third line, Shlishit. Third line, Shema. Right? Et, Vehayu, Levavecha. That's the way it is. Revit, fourth parsha. Vehaya, Uvechol, Nafshechem, Vehachalta, Adonai, Vachem, Asher Adonai, Benenechem, Betecha, Ubish Arecha. That's the way it works. So, as we said, right, some of these words are like doubled up. Like Betecha, Ubish Arecha, right? Then I know it's for sure doubled up. So, that's the way it works. That's the way it should be written. Uh, okay, good. So then it says, right? Okay, I guess we'll do the bit yourself. Um, uh, actually, I think it's all one. Let's just finish the whole thing. So uh, it's, one, it's one halacha over here. These are the heads, the beginning of the line in the head spinning. Right? How does, how does it go? By Daber, first one. Mize, Obish Arecha, three lines. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see, I didn't read. I'm not, I didn't, sorry, I didn't do right. One more time. Rabbi, not, if you're not talking during the application of tefillin, yeah. Okay, that you don't have to do the prayers. Ah, I'm sorry. What was that again? If you're not, I lost them. We lost you, David. Okay, he'll come back. We'll, we'll wait for him. Meanwhile, we'll continue. You there, David? Okay, whatever. So, uh, again, right? So we're going to start with the, with the rush, the head. How does it work? By the bear, first line. There, second line. Hazot, third line. And Yad, fourth line. As we said, it has to be four lines. Shniya, second parsha, Vehaya, Vehol, Peter, Hamor, Adonai, means sign bet, bet, right, we bite called Peter, Vehem, Matskarim. Third one, Shlishit, Shema, Nafshecha, Levavecha, and the fourth one, Revit, Vehaya, Esev, Loti Ten, Albenechem. Two words, Albenechem, Loti Ten, doubled up, right? Two words. So, all, in other words, these are all five, four lines, these, these, these parchments. Four lines, each one. Some of the words are doubled up, as we said, right? So that's why there's more words than you, you, would, you would think, right? Uh, it's more than four words. Okay, so that's the way it works, right? Um, good. What's the, what about the fourth one? Those are the four. They should start like that. In other words, this is the proper way to do it, the most uh, right, uh, proper and good, correct way to write it. 
a person didn't do exactly this format, it's still kosher. Uh, you know, just this is the, the best way. You there, David? Yeah, I keep it's it's my service. It's you it's say it out. crap, I didn't and hear your I question. keep breaking up. But I didn't hear your question. Can you say it again? He's gone again. Okay, I don't know. All right, whatever it is. Uh, so we'll go to the bed yourself. Let's see what's going on over there. Okay. So it says like this, right? Um, with yourself. So it says, all this chapter that the two wrote here, it's all the language of the Rosh. The Seder Tikkun Tfilin in this book that he wrote, the Hu Misefer Atuma, it's also coming from Atuma. It shouldn't be difficult for you. So it says, Maran, Oh, so when it comes to the arm, you said you should, you should put seven lines, right? But he wrote extra words, right? How can there be extra words? That was the problem that we that we had, right? Uh, that uh, Buri asked about. So how does it get? How is it going to be more than seven words if it's only seven lines? So he says So now he explains, right? That this, right? It, it's one it's one new line right? and that's why it's doubled right got double words sometimes so this this is the, the answer to your question right uh, this word is doubled up here thank you very much <laughs> okay uh <laughs> thanks to the bet yourself so it says right that uh and also right if you, if you uh, that what she asked the uh, same thing right uh if if it's it's because of Holnaf Shechem, the Chen Adonai Bachem, the Chen Asher Adonai, the Chen Ben Enechem, all these there's all doubled words here, right? The the Chol Betecha, the Chen Betecha, also Betecha, Uvish Arecha, Uvishel Rosh, right? But in the head it says Katab Rabenu Parsha Rishona Sheshita Rabit Yad. But in, in, in the head he wrote differently, right? That uh, the first um, the first parchment. The fourth line uh, starts with Yad and Taut Sofero, so it's a mistake, he says. It shouldn't be like that. Kientebat Yad the whole Ota Parsha, because there's no word Yad in that Parsha. <laughs> Good to know, right? It's not there. So somebody copied it over wrong, you know, this uh, this tour. It, was, it wasn't copied over, it was a mistake. Scribes error, right? Whatever they call that. So it's, therefore, you have to change it, right? And instead of writing the word Yad, right, uh, it should be Ze. Oh, that's what it should be. The Chen Hu, the Piskei Rosh, also the Piskei Rosh, that's what comes, that's what's written there. The Sefer Turma also there. My God, my man, also my God, my man. The Parsha, uh, in the second, in the second Parsha, right, Rashi uh, Shitin Hen. What are the what are the heads of the lines? One is Vehaya. First one, the second one is bet the chol peter chamor. That's the three words. Gimel, the third line is mimitzrayim mibet abadi abadim. Three words. It's tripled up. Dalad, the fourth line chol peter rechem hazcharim. That that's four words. The parsha shlishit. What about the third parsha? Katab b'shita shlishit. He wrote in the third line levavecha. He wrote levavecha. It's a little agia, but you have to change that mistake. You have to write instead, Bimkomo Levanecha, right? To your children, to your sons. Not Levavecha. The Parsha Revi'it, and all in the fourth Parsha, Katab Beshita Revi'it, he wrote in the fourth line, Al Benechem, like this. Katab Rosh, that's what it says in the Rosh. About the Sefer Tumah, but Sefer Tumah, 
ובגרף בימון, נהג גרף בימון, כתוב במקומו, it says in this place, את ביניכם, right? That's what it says, the way it says over there. So different texts we have, right, regarding these things also. וכן המנהג, so it says, וכן המנהיג, also the sefer, the book called מנהיג, אהד איתניה, regarding what it says in the Brayta, מנחות למד על עמוד ב', אמר רבי יוסה, מודה לי, רבי יהודה ברבי, so it says רבי יוסה, that uh, this rabbi was admitted to me שאם אין לו תפילה של יד, he only has a tefillah of the arm, ויש לו שתיים של ראש, and he's got, uh, I'm sorry, again, one, one more time. שאם אין לו תפילה של, he doesn't have the arm tefillah, he's got two head tefillah, right? Uh, so what does he do? שתולה אור על אחד מהם, so he hangs some, covers it with some leather, right, on, on one of them, uh, and he puts it on the arm right? he uses it as the arm feeling you know it's really made for the head so from here you see that the four compartments of the head you have to make them square on top called of each side so it should be equal to the square of the whole capsule so it should be like all one big square, basically, right? One big cube. And also they should be equal regarding the lines. Even though I received from my rabbis that when it comes to the arm, each parsha should be seven lines. And the head should be four lines. Uh, since it says but since they're equal in every way, there's no difference with him, so it comes out from here, that you see from here, it says, Maran, you shouldn't uh, think of this as some kind of a rebuttal, right, of what the rabbis said, you know, which is the tradition, which is seven and four lines, right, respectively. So what he's trying to say is, right, that the tradition stays the way it is. So what does that mean? On the arm, we do seven lines. On the head, we do four lines. Each parasha. Okay, very interesting. Um, I have a question. Yes. So I can't remember very well, but in the head to fit in, there's no, is there space in between the lines? Oh, uh, Yes, there is. Uh, but you know what it is? Um, what we said was that, are you talking about like between the upper line and the lower line, like something like that? Yes. Well, if there's four lines in the head, no? So I know said, there's four different You said, parts. right, that there has to be enough space between the lines that you should be able to put like a, the head of the lamid and the leg of the half so feet, right? Enough of the space. Is so this like, the there should be one line between them. Okay, is this... Um the same as the nine uh, space for the nine letters, or this is different? The nine is talking about uh, the, um, the, 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 margin, the margin. The margin, okay. okay. The side margin, right? Okay, okay. The margin on the side. Now you were talking about the margin on the top, right? Uh, uh, okay. Each line, how much space do we put? Okay, okay. And then for the arm to fill in, there's seven lines. Is there a separation in between the lines? No, it's one parchment, no? Of course, it's one parchment, but there's there's blank space, right, as we said, right? Okay. There's like one line in between them. Okay, thank you. Okay, fantastic. So it says like this, right? Um, it says in the Shulchan Aruch, Nahagu b'binyan ha-shitin, custom is that, right, when it comes to the number of lines, between, custom is, niftov v'shel yad shiva, on the arm we do seven, right, shiva shitin b'chol parsha, in each parsha, v'shel rosh, and the head, arba shitin, it's four lines. And if he changed it, not pasul, right? Even if he made it different, it's okay. As long as it fits into the capsule, right? Uh, everything is good there, right? Uh, no problem. No, no, no issues. We also said, right, that there shouldn't be too much sticking out you know, from the lines, right? They should be even, right, on the sides, you know? So like, you know, once one line sticking out, you know, like uh, further than the margin, we talked about that. That's also not good to do like that. Sometimes it can be even pasul, depending on how much you put there. I think we said like three letters is too much, you know? 
point. You can put Thank two you. maximum. If, if I remember correctly, that's what we said. Okay, very good. We're done with that. So let's go on. <coughs> so we're going to go now to chapter Lamed Vav. We're rolling along pretty, pretty well, pretty well here. Oh, Hashem. Okay, so we'll start with the tour. And chapter 30, 36. So it says, right, um, yeah, so it says, these are the letters. This is also, I think, quite a little bit of a tough one. Uh, it's, these are the letters that you have to be careful with the, with the way you write them. שקיבל אדם תואה בהם האלף צריך לזהר בנקודה שעליה שהיא כאן יוד שתיגע בה וכן כל האותיות צריכות להיות גולם אחד So he says that you have to be careful the way you write the letters שבקל אדם תואה בהם because you can easily hear regarding how these letters are written right, uh, so a person who's a scribe, so fair, has to know how to write them properly, these letters. So, um, for instance, right, one of the things he mentions over here, the first thing is that, like, like, like this, right, that uh, the Aleph, Sayyid Lizaher ben Nekuda Shealeha, Shaiken Yud, Shitigaba, right, so you have to be careful, he says, on top of the Aleph, there's like a Yud there, you know? If you look at the Aleph, by the way, in my Text over here, you'll see it. You see, you see the alpha my text here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's got a yud there, right? You see that? On top, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure that you make that yud when you do like the alpha. Mm -hmm. A little dot, like solid rail dot coming down. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, because it's a part of the letter, you know, basically. Uh, and that's why, by the way, we don't want to get, you know, writing which is very, very small, because it's hard to do all the details when the writing is very small. That's why I recommend, you know, get a little bit, a little bit larger for mezuzot, you know, not too small. So, uh, that, that also, he says, you have to be careful that that yud has to touch the letter, right? It has to be connected to it. That's what he's talking about here, right? That yud has to be connected to the letter. So it shouldn't be like two, two separate uh, parts. Also, he says all the letters in general, they have to be one piece. They can't be severed and, you know, dismembered, right? That's what he's trying to say. Also, he says the uh, 
of the ein, right? The top of the shin, top of the ein. Those yuds that are on top there have to be also connected to the letter. Mashiach Horea Tzadi, also the, the back of the Tzadi, right? Shena Nogat Pisula. So he says, if you have a letter like that, when it's not touching, Pasul, can you imagine? One little thing makes it Pasul. Um, unless, except the, 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 the foot of the hay, the kuf, the kuf, she'otan lebad, en lahem liga, those are not really touching the, the letter. They're dis, they're disassociated from the letter a little bit, right? They're not touching. Um, they're detached. Uh, those legs. The im no got pasulin. And they're just the opposite, right? If they are touching, it's pasul. Because it's not supposed to be touching. That's the whole thing, right? What are we talking about? The kuf and the hay, right? Over there, the, the, the leg is supposed to be detached from the letter. Not touching the letter. So wherever it's supposed to be touching, it should be touching. Whether it's whether where whether wherever it's supposed to be detached, it should be detached. That's the idea. That's what he's saying here. Okay, very good. So let's see the uh, little bit bit of stuff here. So says bit yourself. Uh, I want to do a little bit more tour, a little bit more, and then we'll come back to this. So it says in the tour like this also, bet betag shel When it comes to the bet, you have to be careful with the uh, the back, the little crown on the back, on the bet. That have ah to make it square. So it shouldn't look like a cuff, right? You gotta square that. The top side, the top right side. You gotta square it. Don't make it round. Because if you round it, it's gonna look like a cuff. And also on the left side, on the top, has to have a little crown there, as we mentioned, right? If you look at my cuffs over here, you'll see that's what they have, right? A little crown there, a little cap, a little keeper there, it's got a little something there. Right uh, on the left side, and on the right side, on the top, it's got to be rounded. So this is the nature of the le of the letter cuff. That's the way it's got to be. Uh, okay, good. Dalit, what about Dalit? Right, the You have to be careful again, right in the back, to make it square, right? You have to square it in order that it shouldn't look like a rash on top. Because the rash is round. Got it? Okay. Uh, hey, what about the hey? Yeshda tag katan lemala. It has a little uh, crown on top, mitzad small on the left side. Like similar to what we saw in the, uh, the bet. My Tama eats the hay taga. So you ask over there, why does the hay have a, have a crown? A parish Rashi, Rashi explains, Yeshla tag katan has a little crown, the hay, the soft gaga on the end of the roof, the mala on top. Rabbi Mutam Piresh, Rabbi Mutam explains, the Maira be oketz shela chorea. That's talking about that little, um, like that little point, which is in the back. Of ah to make it square. It shouldn't be round also. So he says, right, that since Rabbi Tam and Rashi have two different ways of understanding this Gemara, try to do like both of them. So what does that mean? On the left side, put the crown, and on the right side, make it square. This way you covered it from both sides. Okay, what about the head? Right, Ita the pet comments says over there in Gemara, Chazina the the safre duk dukne the chatre le gaga the chet uperesh Rashi is what does that mean? Kemin chutra shotzad small. So they put on the top of the of the chet 
right? Some kind of a little crown there, a little hat, right? Yeshda lemala shemin makel looks like a stick, right? Chutz has a stick. Kaze, right? Kaze. Rabbi Yonatan Pirash Rabbi Yonatan Tam explains Yeshda liot gova b'emsa gaga. There should be a height, like a little bit of a roof, a little bit of a kippa there, a little bit of a right um, cap. On top of the middle of the of the, of the roof, kaze milashon chotat chatotot, like the language right with chatotot means which means like um, uh, it means like a hump hump humps. Ve'zaher it has a hump on the top. Ve'zaher shelo yarik regel ayod. You should be careful not to extend the foot of the yod. Shelot tehen yek kevav because if you make it too long, it's going to look like a vav. So the main difference between the yud and the vav is that one is short and one is long. So don't make the uh, don't make the 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 vav longer. Uh, I'm sorry, the yud too long. So it should it should like a vav, look like a vav. Veloi katzer regel havav. And also don't shorten right uh, the leg of the vav. Shelot yeh niyat keyud. That it shouldn't look like a yud. Just the opposite, right? So each one has to have its own properties, right? The yud should be short. The vav should be long, not the and not the opposite way, right? Not not the not the opposite. Chen regel zayin. Also, he says the foot of the zayin lo yarich. It shouldn't be too long. Not the end of the noon because it can look like a noon sofit, noon pshuta. Lo yikatzer regel noon. Also, I don't make the leg of the noon too short, noon sofit. Should not the end of the noon be zayin. It shouldn't look like a zayin. Rabbi Yehudam Pirish. Rabbi Yehudam explains differently. She ayud tzarich she rosh has smali kafuf lemata. That the head of the yud on the left side has to be a little bit bent down. Kaze kadeita beperek hakomets like it says over there. Gima mitnei ma rosha shel yud yud kafuf. Why is the head of the yud bent down? Kadeita bepsikta. It says over there in psikta, which is like a midrash. Haolam haba nivra biyud. The world to come is a yud. It was created with a yud. Ma yud yesh la nikuda echad. Just like the yud has one point, the mata below, remez le metim she yodin aginam. That's the allusion to the dead, which are going to the going to aginam, right? To hell, to going to hell. And she yodin aginam le echad le mala, and one above, remez she atidin la alot. And the allusion is that the ones who go down there, eventually they'll come up. You know, they'll after they punish them, they'll come up to be cleansed, right? Uh, to be forgiven for the sins. Yeah, according to this, he says, Yesh le yod tag le mala. That's why he says the yod has a little crown on, on top. It's also bending down. Okay, good. And it goes on, right? Hatet. Hatet. Haya omer Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam used to say, Shetarich she'er rosh yamin shela. The top, uh, right top of it has to be Kafuf, like bent down, the matel, bent down a little bit. Kaze, like a, like a, like that, right? Like a tet. A little bit down. The akaf, the akaf, yizaher leagala meachorea. And the akaf, he says, make sure you make it round, right? So it shouldn't look like a, like a, like a bet. Shalot heyin yirat kibet. Jasamech, what about the samech? Sarich leagala, you gotta round it. From three sides. So it should look like a mem sofit. That's the main difference between them, right? The mem sofit is a square and the, uh, the samach is round. Otherwise, it looks the same. All all cheesh ba So it says every letter which has a doubt, in other words, whether it was written properly or not, whether all these shapes were observed or not. So we bring that, bring that back, that boy, right? Who's not so wise and not so stupid, right? The average boy, average Joe. We bring that average Joe back, that little kid. If he can read it, it's kosher. If he can't read it, we have to, we have to get rid of it, right? It's not, not kosher. Okay, uh, we have to put in Geniza, we have to bury it. Okay, so I guess we'll stop there and do bit yourself. We have a few minutes, a couple of minutes, and we'll stop in three minutes, whatever. Okay.
So says Bet Yosef regarding this. All the energy there, Rosh. So all the, these things are the words of the Rosh. Uh, in the laws of Sefer Torah. He brought sources for everything. So you shouldn't think, right, these are just like, you know, arbitrary rules, you know, that come from the sky. No, they, they all have a source. So, you know, I take it seriously, right? Not a joke. Uh, so he says that um, he says some of these things are also written in the Orchot Chaim. Omdim uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped something here. Yeah, the uh, name of the Rashba. It says this little language. It says the Mem and the Samech, which is in the Sefer Torah and the Tfilin Mezuzot, they have to be totally like closed. Right, uh, these letters totally, totally closed up. Because the rabbi said, Shabbat Kuf Dalid, Mem, the Samech, Shebeluchot, Benes Hayomdin. That these two letters, the Mem and the Samech, we're talking about the Mem Sofit, right? They were, when it comes to the, the tablets of the Ten Commandments, it was like a miracle because how do you, how does it stand, right? Uh, because you, it's like totally, totally closed letters. So it should like fall out. You know what I mean? Uh, so how did it not fall out? So he says because they were, it was a miracle. Otherwise they should fall. Because they're totally closed. So there isn't anything holding them. That's the thing, right? How does that inner part get held in? Right? So it's a miracle. In the tablets. Uh, <laughs> okay. Also, also the Alpha and the Shin. Shame and Ken, if it's not so, Enam uh, there wouldn't be even be one letter. The Akuf Tarik Shalot here, Dabuk Mitne, and the Kuf should not be stuck the leg, the Kuf should not be stuck the letter. Mitne Shamu Babone, as they said in the Gemara Shabbat, Kuf Dalla Mudalef, my Tama Kara de Kuf Talia, why is the uh, letter of the Kuf hanging off the letter and not touching it? Like uh, Adkan, Katu Bechuvata Rajba, Says in Chuvah the Rashi, and Shekim Katav Ramban and Ozer Ramban writes this. Shekim Katav Ramban, Ozer Ramban, Pekah Bonei, the Shekim Katav Ribash, Ozer Ribash, the Chuvah Siman Kuv Chet. All these Chuvot. Katav Od Sham Shamati Sheish Mishehora. So he says there over there. I all I heard that somebody who paskins Shekim Od Hey Nit Ba'er Nit Chaber Legag that if the Hey the the leg of the Hey gets connected to the roof, which is not supposed to be right, Shel Mala. No pasal, it's not pasal bed yavad. The Avi Raya, he brought also a source for that. He did amina bekomet saba. He says the Gemara of the Chaptet Amudet. Amar Rashi, Chazina the Sefer Davke, Dukne, Utale the Kliqa the Hey. He says I saw the, the good books that they hang the uh, leg, uh, the foot of the Hey. Me the Kamar Sefer Dukne. He doesn't say that these are like good books, the good good ones, the the precise ones. He says she ain't kuva. So therefore, it seems like it's not. Really, halacha, it's more like a stringency. It's a, it's a proper way to do it, the best way. Then Zek Dachon, but he says, Bena. It says, Maran, this is not proper in my eyes. I don't agree with this. Shalin is Kar Zeb Baita, because it's mentioned the Baita. Shalin is Kar Zeb Baita, because you shouldn't make the hay into a chet. So if you touch it, it's going to look like a chet. So that's already not good. Not kosher. The Ochachti Lemala, the Yikuba Kama, the Cheni Re, right? So it says, I already proved it from above. But that's talking about uh, the halacha that even even it's it's not kosher without that. Also comes up from Rambam. The words of Rambam: Perk Aleph Minchot Tefillin, the first perk of laws of Tefillin. The Araya Ai Yeshli Lidchota. Okay, so I guess we'll continue, we'll continue next time with the rest of this. Anyway, it was nice to have you tonight. Chazak Baruch, be blessed with wealth, health, and happiness. No more pains, no more, no more suffering, right? Everything should be good, right? Lots of simcha mm -hmm. and uh, lots of Torah and elevation. Amen, amen. Chazak. Amen. Thank Good you. Thank you. All the best.